Yes, Rabbi Kaplan? I know somebody close to me. And then he also went off to there. And I have a friend, and he, he tells me about his son, a friend that I learned with in Cheder. And I have another friend uh, that also I learned with in Cheder that I heard he has a son. And Kama the Kama, my son-in-law after that was on Shabbos. I was by my son-in-law. He told me, my son-in-law said to me, it's not something that you could discuss. There's a why. There's no why to it. It just, in, in, in his slang, in, in modern Israeli slang, you say, Bali. It just came to me. I just felt like doing like that. And, and, the, and, my, and my son-in-law was telling me there's nothing you can do against it. There, there's nothing you can talk about. Because I just feel that way. And I remember that I read an article about some... Uh, uh, a mashpia, a person uh, that's Osik in Kirov. <laughs> and that he, he once talked to a bocher. And the bocher was off the derech. And he said to the bocher, You're a ben melech. You have an ishama. He comes to us. He said, I covered it. comes from. It comes from a place of the greatest tanugim that there are in the world. Look where you're going. You're being like a cat that he searches in the garbage cans. Is that what you want to take? Take that. Take yourself, your the Ben Melech that you are, and be a cat that looks in the garbage cans. And the boy answered, oh, yeah, I'm a cat that looks in the garbage cans. Yeah, that's what I am. No, can you talk further? Is there anything more to talk? I think probably everybody, the other one that I was talking about, I'm being myself. I'm wearing crazy clothes because I'm being myself. I'm wearing jeans that are torn. You hear? There's a certain a certain part in, in, in that world, kill what they call a world, to wear jeans that are torn. What kind of Indian is it? It's Baal Peor. Creating bizarre and shame to, to look ugly. Ugliness is up there. That's a certain ugliness. Kicking everything. Kicking every rule. Evan Ezra says, Lamanya the Mercha Chovud. What's covered in the Shoma? That's covered. In the Shoma is called covered. The home, the home, it's of Ruchnes is covered. Malachim and Srofi. They stand with covered. Maritim, umakdishim, umamlichim. Maritim. They look up. They look up in awe to the greatness of Hashem. They stand in a seder groups. Machanus, machanus. They say in harmony, they say kedusha. Everything over there is covered. Olamaza is covered at Torah. Rabbi Yana says, the Yisod of Yiddishkeit is covered at Torah, knowing that what's great, a Talmud Chochm, that's greatness. I heard once in Ashmoiz from Rabbi Shlomo Brevder, he said that he once met an old, old a woman from Lithuania, that she was describing her city, where she came from, and she said, and there was a Talmud Torah that used to walk by every day. She said, when she said it, she talked And that's it. Where's the? And I asked myself, 
Where's the Mekonen that's going to write a kina? On the Neshamas, Shali Shrufa Baish, on these Neshamas that are burning, where's the Mekonen that can write a kina? We don't have, we don't have such people anymore nowadays. I once heard from up to Mayor, he said, when we say the kinas, I mean, we don't understand so much. Not everything. Do Baruch Hashem nowadays, there's some that printed kinas with up here, so we understand a little bit better. But we don't, we don't feel the hearts are stopped up, the minds are stopped up. But we're saying over the irrigation of the Rishonim, of the of the Kadmonim, that they wrote what they felt. This is not poetry. It looks like poetry. It might sound like poetry, but it's the deep, deep pain that the Marambe Rutenberg felt, the Rabbi Yudha Halevi felt, Rashi, Rabbi Nugeshem, Gedolei Olam. They're writing, they're, they're expressing what they feel. Look what it says here in the Kina of, of the Marambe Rutenberg. He's talking about the Torah that was burnt. So he asks, he asks a, quest, a question. This is like in the in the in the eighth line of uh, the eighth line. Eichon is soon a beish ochlo to ukal beish boss. He doesn't understand. <coughs> Maram May Rutenberg doesn't understand. How can it be? The Torah was given beish ochlo, a fire, a ruchnistic fire that eats of. Could it be that it should be burned with aish bosa? Could it be that 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 Torah that was given in aish ochlo should be burned by aish bosa? They took to, and, and and he doesn't dafka mean the sefer Torah with all the halachas. He means the shas that they took twenty wagons of svarim, and that 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 was. And how many svarim did they have in those days? It means shasim probably. That, that's the Torah that was given by Aish. How could a how could a, a gashmiistic of fire be sholit on such a thing? Could it be such a thing? Asks the Maram Rudenberg in his kina. And further on, he says, he says further, Turi belapis vaish, halabavuzen esonech. Did Hashem give you in fire by Matan Torah? It says that the Torah was given by Aish. Was the Torah given in fire? Because in the end the fire was going to burn you. Again, he's asking Akash, how could it be such a thing? That the Torah that was given by Aish, maybe, maybe it's the same Aish he's asking. Maybe it's the same age that was the Torah was given in. It was, but but he asks, could it be? Could it be such a thing that it was given in fire because it's going to be burnt in fire? It's how can, could it be? And maybe that's the reason. Maybe it's not. He's expressing confusion. Eicho, how could it be? We're in a situation that we don't understand. We don't understand. I mean, if a person, if they kill people, so it's a virus that did. But how could they burn the Torah? How could the Torah be burned? The Torah was given in fire. And, and in the beginning, he says, it was given in fire. How could it be that the fire should burn it? And later on, he says, maybe it's the same fire that burned. And he goes on to say further that uh, the, uh, that he goes on to say, "Esma um, lanafshi, I wonder on my nephesh, eichier of lechik yachol, how can I eat?" Just like here in Nidachas, they gathered together all this farm and they burnt it. So he, he is, he can't understand all this. And I'm asking, and what about Nishomas that were burnt? Where's the Mekon and Dekarite Akina on these burnt Nishomas? And I would say, I would write, 
we can't write, we're not big enough, we don't have that madrig of Kedusha to be able to write Kimis. But I would write, how could I, how could I, I did, did you come from the Eishochla in order to be burnt by the street? In order to be burnt by the tomb of the street? Is that why you came from the Eishochla? I would, I would ask in my, if I would write a kine. I mean, you you came from Ruchnius, which Ruchnius has no Mamoshes. Did you come from a Ruchni place in order to enter the emptiness, which you think emptiness and Ruchnius is the same, because in both there's no Mamoshes? We have to cry on this, and on that the Shulchan Aruch says, oh, maybe, maybe it's included in Shreifas at Torah. The Tanat Veilio said, it says, I don't remember where, but it was asked a question in the Beis HaMedr, what came first, the, the Torah or the Neshamas of Klal Yisrael? And Tehilio Novi came and he was poached to Shiloh, but the Neshamas of Klal Yisrael came before the Torah, and the Torah was created afterwards. And if the Marambe Rutenberg asks such powerful, strong questions, and we cry when we say it every year. How could, how could it be that this is burnt, that the Torah was burned? Allah said so we could ask, come or come, we could ask it on the Shomas Israel that we see that they're, that they're burned. And, 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 and their answers are answers of meaningless, nothingless emptiness. At least if somebody became, maybe, maybe there was somebody, David Cheshem went and became a judge. Maybe, maybe you can, maybe you can understand, and even that you can understand. Is is that is is that why your neshama came from so high? Well, we should we should cry about it. I mean, somebody could come and say to me, "So, what are you going to do about? It? Did you do anything to help? Did you go out and be my carp? Did you go out and talk?" I mean, I'm not here to answer. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I should be doing it. I don't know, and I'm not answering it. I just want to talk about one aspect, and this is what I'm talking about now. At least, at least, we that we sit in our corners, let's feel, let us feel the pain, the pain that, 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 that the Shechina has seen, the Shomas that are being burnt, and this is not something that's happening from today. It's something that's been going on maybe 200 years and more. But in the last years, once from when they made a Medina, it became official, official. Here we have a place where Yidin call themselves Medina Israel, And this is a place where we have furnaces that burn the shamas. It's an official furnace to burn the shamas. This is a way of life. And pure, all these children don't know what Shema Yisrael is, don't know anything. That's what made me think of this when I was reading this article about this, about, about, about this, uh, Gerach And, and I was reading another article in Besheva about somebody that sits in Tel Aviv and he has a, a house where he, where people come and he just talks about Yiddish Gate, but officially it's not the place for discussing Yiddish Gate, only it's a place for having Jewish experience. And he says then that Yiddish Gate is not so threatening, it's not something to fear so much, it's not what you thought it was. And all this is, is the Medina Israel that we have, that we're living in. Millions, there probably are a million children that they don't know who was Moshe Rabbeinu. I mean, and, and, and you, you might think it's someplace far away. I have a friend that his name is Yitzhak Lavid, that I just think, man, I go, he's 76 years old. And I go to visit him every week. He has a daughter that went off the day. And I mean, over there, it's, it wasn't so much going off the derech. I mean, the, the, the whole house was a week. I mean, he, he's a person that knows how to learn, but, but the house is weak. And she went off some, so far off that the, 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 the grandson don't know anything, anything. And this Yitzhak told me that the, he was telling me about how he was trying to to calm down the child. The child was being wild. So he said instead of uh, 
they tell him, why are you being wild? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? So he says, I brought him and I sat him down. And I talked about who Avram Avinu was, who was Moshe Avinu. And the child came down here, these things. What? What? Somebody in Bait Vigan, Yerushalayim, is telling his grandchildren. Uh, uh, Rabbi Kaplan, we're taking another.